Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Now here's an embarrassing story, my win streak is at 1! What happened? Well you remember, we had a very difficult run, uh, it was our Isaac run I think last. And I beat it on the chest, but just barely. I must have stopped recording that video before the cutscene finished, then when I loaded it up for the NLSS, I had to beat the chest again on continue in order to start a new run, and I lost because I'm bad. I think we're due for an Eden run though, to uh, restart the the streak here. It's at one because we did an Azazel run right after, you can go watch those for yourself. Probably the prompting that I need to probably finally get uh, separate files here. So we got ZX4Z, SG4C. A little bit of a confusing seed, and we're starting this seed up with a terrible rate of fire. Terrible damage, we're three-shotting those spiders, which, look, I'm not gonna try to say that I don't deserve to be hit by a spider if I get hit by a spider. However, the reason I did get hit by that spider is because I thought we, surely with these red tears we were gonna be two-shotting it, but that is not the case. The quarter, uh, a pretty good start. Apart from that, this is an absolutely terrible Eden draw here. I'm actually tempted to use the razor blade right here just to make it through this room. We really are going to need... I should have used the razor blade. We really are going to need uh, better tiers or much higher damage because as of right now, like this guy's going to be spawning spiders way faster than I can actually deal with. I gotta get in there. It's not an exaggeration, okay? Like, look at look at this. It's gonna take us like 12 hits to knock this guy down, and on like every other one, he actually gets one phase of his growth back. Please tell me that there is something in this item room that is gonna make this not as god awful as this seems so far. There are other ways out for us. If we get a key, shears is actually really good. If we get a key, we the quarter gives us certainly enough money to buy something from the shop, and if we were able to buy, there's a number of items that would help out a lot. If we were able to buy, like, a candle, that's a very easy shortcut to having at least a baseline level of damage that's acceptable. If we were able to buy, there's options. We could tailor ourselves after the boss fights to maybe be in a better position. But honestly, I think if we had not gotten something akin to the shears or something that improved our... Uh, our attributes, particularly damage and HP, we probably would have lost if this boss was the Haunt or Fistula. So, I'm pretty happy to actually have gotten the Shears, and as long as we save it for the boss fight, we should have a pretty good chance of not dying. And maybe beating the boss without taking damage at all, which would be uh, good practice for the next floor, when pretty much I'm going to need to deal with the Devil, or it's going to be a little do or die, I think. If we don't get that deal with the Devil and we have to take this damage down to the Caves or Catacombs, it's gonna be terrible. It actually feels like my game is running super slowly, like that's how bad my DPS is right now. Usually these guys take like two hits, that's three, four, could be worse. Three, four, I was really hoping I'd be able to snag a uh, secret room as a result there, but let's be honest, I've kind of got bigger fish to fry right now. Get the compass and the nine volts. I think in this case, I gotta go 9 volts, just so that we have a better chance of being able to use our uh, our shears more often. So what I'm thinking is that we use shears here, then we go back and buy the 9 volts so we have a charge immediately in case we find our boss room uh, fairly quickly on the next floor. But definitely the shears one of the best spacebar items in the game. The screw is a little better for us, like it's okay, it's not amazing, but it'll, it'll get the job done temporarily here. This is like a... Uh, this is a scary situation, man. This is definitely one of the worst Eden starts we've had recently. So I'm thinking we get 9 volts, and then we get the bomb, and this could allow us to get a blood bank on the next floor, then we hope for small rock. And it did work out like that. Does seem to happen from time to time, and we might as well explore a little bit more. Even with that, uh, alright. <laughs> Even with that damage upgrade, and the tears upgrade from the screw, we're still in a pretty bad position. It's just better than it used to be. Uh, do we have a key in that shop that we can buy? No. Some people might take issue with the fact that I did go with uh, the 9 volt there, but I, I think it ended up being the right decision. Probably it's a little bit of a tough call to make. We'll see. Uh, this is perfect. Okay, so hopefully we'll be able to snag another HP upgrade here. I don't really want ah, the IV bag, which is what we just got. That being said, we are at 14 cents now. Oh, yeah, just the perfect time. Let me see what the people on Skype are talking about. Nick is watching some magic weed bus. He says it's pretty dank IMO. It's freaking 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. Get some work done, you, you layabout. 
time for watching cartoons at 2 p.m. is when you're, I was gonna say 6, but you know, like 16 on summer vacation. That train has sailed. Some of us gotta record the Binding of Isaac, at least don't inhibit uh, my work here. Um, 14 cents. My hope is that uh, we'll be able to get that 15 cent and pick up absolutely nothing of value there. Actually, let's go back. Uh, the Spirit Heart may be useful, so I'll get that. And the other thing I want is that key. And actually, if we could buy a Spirit Heart and, or sorry, if we could buy that bomb and blow up this Tinted Rock, that might be valuable as well. Everything has started to turn around a little bit here. I'm feeling pretty good about that, but uh, there's still a long way to go. Or is there? We'll, we'll find out. This deal with the devil uh, after our boss fight here will determine whether or not there's a long way to go to making this like a viable run. I, I hope I'm not coming across as uh, ungrateful. But small rock plus the screw I think has given us like basic starting damage on your average Eden run. Which admittedly might be a little higher than your average damage on uh, you know a non-Eden run. It's like I'm not saying it's shit. I'm basically saying like oh the caviar here is almost getting as good as the caviar at you know the place down the street. However, if you're used to the caviar down the street, you know that I'm not saying it's a genuine concern that you should be very, you know, concerned about. I'm just saying, it might pop into your brain, right? Extra spirit heart helps out. We might even be in the territory where we could expect a uh, a spirit heart deal. I don't think so. I'm not sure if those can show up unless you're exclusively running spirit hearts. That's a really good trade. We were low on keys, so this helps out a lot. Mystery sack is actually pretty good now. Pays out with uh, special consumables. That can help us out a great deal. You know, double keys, uh, double, uh, double, uh, double make gum. It looks so natural, no one can tell, just for men gel. Let's continue onwards here. Yeah, Northern Lion would know just for men gel. You gotta think about your jokes before you say them like that, straw man that I completely made up. Just for men gel is for men who have gone prematurely gray or are otherwise looking to color their hair without the stigma of it being dye. Bald men, you know, we have Rogaine. It's very different. Uh, Guppy's tail is not immediately useful, so as much as I would love to go off on some uh, ridiculous, you know, Pilkington-esque tangents, unfortunately we just don't have the uh, ability to do that with sound uh, mind right now, and with, with peace of mind is really what I meant to say. Oh, hello cats. Hey! Hey! Don't jump on top of my computer. You are very guilty of jumping on top of my computer, and it has kind of like an open top case, you're getting your cat hair all over the shit and making it run not so well, Tomo. I know it's warm and it makes noise, you want to be up there, but you can't go up there. Cats, man. You know, when I was younger, I didn't really... I mean, I understood the phrase, because it's in English, but I didn't really internalize the meaning of the phrase, curiosity killed the cat. Now that I have cats, I'm like, curiosity is gonna kill th these fucking cats. I'm not saying I'm going to kill them, I'm saying literally they're going to be so curious they're going to get into something they shouldn't get into. Like, in our new place we have uh, our own laundry room. It's not really a room, it's kind of like a laundry closet with a washer and dryer in it. Curse of the Labyrinth, pretty nice. And, um, there's a little tiny gap between the wall and the washer-dryer unit. So the cats can actually sneak behind it. And I haven't looked behind it, but I think that there might be like a little spot in the wall where the water line comes in for the, uh... Laundry that they might actually be able to use to get into the wall of the fucking apartment building So when I'm doing the laundry, I close the laundry room door and I close the bathroom door Which is adjacent to the laundry room as I'm closing it every fucking time Both of the cats run in they're like oh, oh you're trying to close us out of something. No way dog I'm telling you there's and I that's They're gonna get inside of that wall one day, and I have to figure out how I'm gonna it's gonna be like a Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, man. How am I gonna remove some cats from a fucking apartment building wall? I have no idea. Maybe you can't. In any case, though, um, don't think that we're better, man. Don't think that humans are better than that. You know the fucking Disney vault. The Lion King 2 is going to the Disney vault from whence it will never return. If you just have like a, a limited time offer on something, that's the the metaphorical door closing in your face, isn't it? That's what Steam should start doing is like, actually th this, there's an example of this that worked out very not so well for the developer. Um, holy shit, okay, this is really bad. I've taken a staggering amount of damage in very, very quick succession here. Let's shut the fuck up and play properly. That was just embarrassing. No matter how bad I think they're, I know we can get in there, like get those consumables with the, with the shears, by the way. 
No matter how shitty I think this Eden run is, that's no excuse for taking as much damage as I just took. So let's straighten up and fly right here. Be smarter. Get some red hearts. Ideally, that would be part of the equation as well. Um... Man, I really should just use the shears and fly over the back of those enemies, but I was frightened. Please, no more spiders? I can barely do enough damage with this shitty rate of fire to kill you before you spawn shit. Oh my god, and then we got those spiders when they die that jump super high. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that on Steam you should really not offer your game as if like it's gonna be on sale this one time and then never again. This developer of the game called uh, The Castle Doctrine did that, and then he sold a decent amount of his games at launch, decent number of copies, I should say, at launch. I'll get that later. Uh, and then, apparently sales have tanked really hard, because everyone's like, well, you know, why would we buy the game now? We already missed it at its best possible price. And the real problem with it is that it's a multiplayer focus game, and as a result of that, they have, like, no players now. Fuck it, I'll take it. Also, I gotta sign out of Skype, because I hate everything. That's alright, though. We lived! And even though we compromised our deal with the devil chances on this floor, it, it doesn't matter that much. This will go away in a second here. Uh, it doesn't matter that much because we were pretty unlikely to get a deal with the devil on this floor anyway. So we took uh, an item that directly is like... It, it makes the problems that I have with this run exaggerated even more. Our rate of fire is going to be halved, but our damage is going to be uh, much increased. We'll also be able to pick up something from the shop for sure here. Red candle. I was thinking, like, what if we get red candle? I think I have to take it. As much as I do love uh, the shears, and I really, really do. That's not just like me saying, Oh, I love the shears, but I'm gonna get rid of it. Like, diplomatically giving it kind of a fuck you. No, for real, man. I think the shears is a super good item. But with our relative lack of ability to create... Uh... A little scary there for a minute. With my relative lack of ability to, you know, kill enemies... I think having something like Red Candle that allows me to use it every single room is a little bit more valuable and, and potent right now. I still think Red Candle should charge up once you finish a room as well as being connected on a timer, but... Uh, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Uh, this is an XL floor, so we haven't been to everything that we can afford to or would want to go to. We're not one-shotting those lasers. That's a big surprise to me. Laser bullets, I should say. Alright, let's just walk it back a little bit. Then... That's like a... Octuple kill right there. I'll take the speed and shot speed increase, but let's be honest. That's definitely not what we were looking for here. But Mega Maw is not uh, the world's most difficult fight. Every shot from Red Candle is going to do like 50% of its HP. Probably closer to 40, I guess, but... Hopefully that ends up being irrelevant. We did take a little damage at the end, which I'm embarrassed about, but we picked up the Pentagram. Pentagram for more damage? I could really, really use a Tears upgrade. Now, some of the blame for our rate of fire does lie on me, because of course I did take, uh... Eve's Mascara. Not all the blame, though! But some of the blame. You know, I, I, I reject the notion that if you do one thing, you could never complain about the, the consequences that are related to it in one way. Well, you know, if you don't vote, you can't complain. I don't buy that. I think you should vote. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. I think you should vote if you have an opinion on it and you follow the issues. I think if, you, if you're if you ignorant of everything that's happening in the election, it's probably more deleterious to vote than to not vote. But anyway, that's that's a more philosophical discussion for another day. People always look at voter turnout and they're like, oh, that's really shitty that we didn't get a lot of voters, but... You should, ooh, that's so good. You should be looking at voter turnout and being like, it's pretty shitty that nobody cares about the election. Like, what what have we done that has, you know, created this kind of apathy for our, our country? That's the really depressing part about it. I mean, shit, man. Vancouver just elected a new mayor. And there wasn't that much hype about it. Well, it's not a new mayor. They've re-elected our old mayor. But the, there's like crazy political discussions regarding this referendum that we have right now for like a 0.5% tax increase in order to fund new uh, SkyTrain and bus construction. Like the SkyTrain construction and bus routes. The SkyTrain is like a monorail, basically. That It's our light rail transit system here. I'm not saying that's something people should not care about. You know, that's an issue that, you know, everyone 
uses public, well, not everybody, but a lot of people use public transportation, myself included, on a regular basis. It's something I'm passionate about, but when it came to the mayor mayoral election, I was just like, ah, well, you know, one's as good as the other. And I'm ashamed of it, but at the same time, you know, I gotta, you gotta, there's a reason that a lot of people are apathetic about politics. It's, it seems like shit never changes, man. Last federal Canadian election, I was in Korea, though. So, I wasn't really apathetic, I was just, uh, outside of the country. Yeah, I guess we'll pick this up right now, just in case we get a, an arcade on the rest of this floor. I'm not thrilled with the items that we've gotten. However, we are definitely, like, you know, surviving now. We have more HP, we have some spirit hearts to back it up. Um, we have a curse room and one guppy item, which might actually be really nice for us. Chariot card, I guess we'll, uh, we'll save. I don't think we're going to be breaking any records for the, the speed of this run. Although, actually, it, it's pretty much on time for boss rush. Not that I want to do boss rush. Like, if we end up not getting a teleportation card, it's not going to happen. Because this is just not a, a run where I'm confident in our abilities there. Could look for the secret room here as well. But uh, first, let's throw a bomb down. I assume usually the over-under is like one spirit heart. Two is just uh, gravy there. Three! Okay, so we got two and a half spirit hearts for taking our time to go there. We got some bombs. Let's look for secret rooms. And that one worked out super quickly. Gave us enough money to buy whatever we want on the next floor, but uh, decent chance we fight greed, I guess. Yeah, I mean a decent chance, not a necessarily a huge chance. We picked up like four and a half spirit arts in very recent memory here. I was actually like maybe 30% confident that we were just straight up going to lose right here. Anyway, thank you to... Uh, Sounds like I'm shouting out a Twitch subscriber, but thank you to the Shears for the hard work that it's done. Just leave that bomb there forever in limbo to think about what it could have done, but we'll never get the opportunity to do. Out, out, brief candle. Yeah, thanks to the Shears for the help that it gave us, but I do think that red candle is going to be a little bit more important here for us. Uh, there's, a, there's a case to be made for not picking up nine lives until after the deal with the devil, just in case we were going to trade our HP away anyway. But I couldn't live with myself if I'd operated under that assumption and then left nine lives behind like an idiot. So I'm going to just take it right now and be content with it. Yeah, Northern Lion, you take it right now. Excuse me, brain? What did you just say to me? I seriously would... I wouldn't give up a body part for better tears. Like, that's, uh... That's, it strikes me as pretty short-sighted. That being said, I would really like to have better tears. I'm not using red candle here because I want to make sure it's ready for the next room. For real though, like, uh, our, our rate of fire is just not very good right now. It's half as good as it used to be, and it was already shitty in advance of that. I am still glad we picked up uh, Eve's Mascara though. I could barely uh, intellectually articulate the reasons why. However, uh, I, I like it as an item. Even though effectively it just keeps your DPS the same and lowers your rate of fire. I think it's better against... Like, if you give me the choice between shooting a lot soy milk style and, like, shooting occasionally Eve's Mascara style, I'll usually take shooting occasionally for enemies that uh, have periods of invulnerability. Like, against Mom, I'd rather not be firing continuously. I'd rather... You know, just have to aim one good shot. Of course, if you miss, the stakes are higher. Thank fucking god. We also might have gotten lucky taking Eve's Mascara. Maybe our rate of fire actually could not have gotten worse than it already was. And as a result, we were already at, like, the floor. You can't go lower than the floor. And then we just went higher than the floor. I'd also say we've got a pretty good chance of becoming Guppy here. So, you know, that would be one reason why we'd want to have a, a better rate of fire. So we could actually spawn flies. That would make Eve's Mascara a suboptimal choice here. But although it is a little too early to call it a, uh, a one run or a lost run. It is a huge help for us what has happened so far. Especially, you know, when one floor ago I was pretty convinced that I was going to actually lose my streak at one. Although for YouTube purposes, technically zero. Creative use of red candle there. Made it very easy to get through. I encourage you to try this Eden Seed out on your own. It's uh, not the easiest one I've ever done. It's also an, an exceptionally and dreadfully boring start. A passive item that gives you money. I hate when they shoot without doing the animation, man. That's the lost killer right there. We'll go back for that, obviously. 
Oh, some of them, they skirted the line. You're supposed to stay in a, a very tight rank and file when you do that, mister. Try for secret rooms on our way here, so maybe we can save a little bit of time and not have to backtrack. And we're actually fighting greed in our secret room, which is great news. Because we have a lot of money that we can spend on our shop, or even donate some. Like, why not, right? Plus, I, I love the secret room item pool. I mean, obviously we didn't get to experience it here, but... If we had, you would have loved it. You like that shot right there? It's gonna sound like I'm being facetious, but that's what I actually planned on. There's our guppy dream come true there. It's happened an awful lot. Look, I don't think we need to talk about how I would like there to be more transformations in Rebirth and maybe guppy a little bit less common. It's okay though. For now, this is an extremely good help. I just think of Guppy the same way I think of, like, you know, the pact now. When Guppy shows up as a transformation, I'm just like, oh, Guppy. Um, I, I'll take the piggy bank. It's not very good. Uh, and I'll take the Bible. The reason I'm taking the Bible here is just so that I don't have to take the Bible if I get the rosary or something like that. Like, I'll have already picked it up. And we're still doing fine on money and, and we will likely continue to do so. So I don't think it's a big deal. Figure, like, uh, do things the, the cute and clever way here because we can. Finish that room off without breaking a single rock. I would probably kiss Boss Rush goodbye. We're at 18 minutes already and have not made it through uh, the Depths 1. And that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get trapped there. <laughs> I was pretty confident that I was going to get trapped. And then as it was happening, it took a little longer than I expected. So, you know, there's nothing left to do but just bask in it. Okay, we, like, desperately need a rate of fire upgrade here, please. Monstro 2 is, is pretty easy, and our rate of fire is a little bit less of a problem against Monstro 2 than you might expect. Because he spends a lot of time in the air when we wouldn't be able to hit him anyway, so it's like that invulnerability type thing. Where, if he's not going to be able to be hit all the time, we don't have to be shooting all the time, what does it matter? Very easy fight, deal with the devil potential. HP upgrade. And not Krampus. Not Krampus, but not good either. Book of Sin is uh, mostly worthless worthless for us. Why did I skip our item room? Did I really just like go to the item room, but completely ghost on it for no reason? It appears that I did. That's okay. We can go back for it. I'm glad that I remembered. I mean, I was thinking like, whoa, I haven't been to the item room yet. We can't leave. I didn't realize that it was by my own design, though. Mystery sack and sack of pennies working out here. Glad I did. That's the mind, which is, uh... I don't know. I think when it comes down to it, the mind might actually be my favorite of the Holy Trinity items. You know, ignoring Godhead, obviously. You got, like, the body, the soul, and the mind. I think the body's the worst, unless you're really bad on HP. Like, in the early game, the body's a pretty great pickup. They're all pretty great, regardless. The soul can be really, really good, but I really like the 100% the like mapping ability. Makes me feel a lot less bad about not picking up the compass earlier when I had the chance. And we will uh, we'll leave. I'd say with four seconds left right now, Boss Rush is probably not the best opportunity for us, but that's okay too. Necropolis 2 and Curse of the Lost. Uh, very unfortunate because we won't be able to see where the heck we're going. <laughs> I guess that's the, the downside is that Curse of the... Uh, or uh, the, the Mind is the only item that can completely have its benefits nullified by a single very common curse. Well, the body can have its effects nullified by Curse of the Unknown, technically, because you don't even know how much HP you... Okay. Come on. You're, you're, you're grasping at straws there. I'm not even going to say that's technically right. People seem to have the wrong definition of technically right sometimes. They're like, technically right does not mean wrong, but kind of close. It's like right on a technicality. I think, anyway. You know, I didn't invent the English language as much as I like to admit it sometimes. Shouldn't run into any financial problems. I mean, that much is fairly apparent. Uh, at the same time, I don't know why I'm playing this. I guess I'm hoping to get the blood bag. But I would probably classify this as a, a likely win now. Which is maybe being even a little bit overly conservative about uh, our chances here. But I really hate that we're not generating as many flies as we could because our rate of fire is terrible. Infamy is great and... Uh, Means that we're not going to get infamy from a golden chest, which is maybe great or maybe terrible. Because infamy is probably the second best item you consistently get from golden chests. 
The best, uh, excuse me, I missed that somehow. The best is definitely Fate, just because the ability to fly is so useful. Second best is probably Infamy, man. What else is it gonna be? Like, it could be Bob's Brain. That can really, really help you out. I'm not even being facetious, man. Bob's Brain, <clears throat> pardon me, can kind of be like a red candle. You know, it, it can, uh, well, that's not very good. Uh, it can, uh, give you the, the damage you need to get over a, you know, baseline minimum. Not in this case, though. That's a magician card. Uh, in this case, it's non-necessary. Man, I've been missing a lot of consumables. I got a level with you guys. Full disclosure, I ran out of coffee this morning. I, like, scraped the bottom of the coffee grinder and got what I could. Had, like, half a cup, but, um, brain's not working at full capacity here. So, is our damage adequate enough to justify getting rid of Red Candle for Tammy's head? I would like it to be. I think Tammy's head is a more exciting item. We have the 9 volt, so it would charge multiple times per room. It'll generate flies for us, but as of right now, it's not as good, but I'm gonna take it anyway because I think it's better for the future, and it has the potential for much cooler synergies than, uh, than Red Candle. But again, thank you to Red Candle, you know. This run is built on the, the backs of our other items, and uh, Red Candle was a huge help. Probably instrumental, just in, like, to my survival here. Without Red Candle, we could have easily found ourselves dying a, a very terrible death on the Caves Power 1. We came very close to it. See, that's what I'm looking for right there is, you know, that kind of damage, but against enemies that have more HP than, uh, than Teratoma. And again, the rate of fire, or the rate of recharge on Tammy's head is not going to be incredible, but on a long fight, that could make a, a considerable difference. It could save me a spirit heart or two. In theory, of course. And anytime we can abuse this to get a little bit larger fly army, that's fine by me. Anytime we can carry flies from room to room, that's gonna, you know, speed up uh, the whole process on the next room. We actually gained one fly there. Nothing to sneeze at! And may continue to do so. Plus, Tammy's head kind of works with batteries. That's another luck upgrade, which is fantastic. Uh, have we not seen our shop? And now, it's done for me, if you steal my shop. You know, that's that's Len, uh, Steal My Sunshine. You know those guys are Canadian? It also created uh, an Abbott and Costello routine between me and my friends when I was like 12 and didn't know anything about popular music. And they're like, yo, have you heard that new Len song? And I was like, you mean Fly by Lenny Kravitz? Yeah, it's pretty dope. And they're like, no, the song is called Steal My Sunshine. And I'm like, Lenny Kravitz has a song called Steal My Sunshine? That's weird. Why are they still playing Fly on the radio? And he's like, nah. Lenny Kravitz is different than Len. And I was like, I don't I don't know what you're talking about, man. All the cool kids call Lenny Kravitz Len. It was a it was a whole to-do. Catchy song though, man. Here's a little little known fact about Steal My Sunshine. I know a surprising amount about this song, because uh it's a while away my days reading the uh can't stop the bum rush uh, Wikipedia article. That's the name of their smash. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a debut, but it's their breakout album. Brendan Canning of Broken Social Scene, another Canadian indie band, used to play uh, used to play in Len. And in their music video for Steal My Sunshine, they had like a hundred thousand dollar budget and like spent it all on alcohol. They bought so much alcohol in their hotel that it actually broke the elevator when they tried to take it up to their room. They filmed all... This is true. It sounds like I'm slandering them. Nothing wrong with it, man. Probably. Uh, they filmed uh, all their scenes in, like, the afternoon, so they had time in the morning to get over their hangovers. I can't believe how false this sounds, but it's totally true. So we didn't really... You know, through six boss fights, we haven't improved our rate of fire at all. It's actually gotten worse. Uh, but with, uh, with the mind here, I'm feeling pretty good. Are you telling me we summoned zero flies? When my Tammy's headshot hit, I call bullshit on that. No tinted rocks that I can see could be wrong. There we go. That's more along the lines of what I'm looking for. With nine lives, it is hard to contemplate a reality in which this does not constitute a win. But I would really, really like... That was bad. I would really, really like a deal with the devil here. Thank you, Mystery Sack, for that uh, spirit art, by the way. I would really, really, really like a deal with the devil here that actually improved myself a little bit. Forgot we can fly. Why am I so worried about the, the spikes over there? I feel like, uh, outside of guppy items, we haven't really gotten that much 
that actually helps us out. I mean, Infamy and Fates and, sure, Tammy's head as well. I'll give you that. Another tiers upgrade is pretty huge. I was, I, I was mistaken. We actually had improved our rate of fire a little bit because we had one tiers upgrade. But we did have uh, the Eve's Mascara pickup. But I'm not really counting that because that's voluntary. It's Guppy's Paw. Uh, I, I have to get us to the HP cap at least. And I'd rather have permanent Polaroid invincibility. So you know what? Let's just throw it all away here. Utero 1, yeah. I don't know why, for a second I had a weird flashback, thought I was on like Utero 2 or something like that, but uh, luckily for us, this is not the case. Oftentimes you'll find a tinted rock on this room, but uh, yeah, that might be one in the corner. It's kind of hard to tell because of the map. It was a tinted rock. It was. Sometimes that map can be a little tricky. Alright, I'm starting to feel like pretty justified that Tammy's head was the right choice. We got another tinted rock here. I guess that's the best I could hope for, considering that we already are at the uh, HP cap anyway. Health up. Not really that necessary, actually. Lemon Party. I can see forever. I think a Lemon Party might be better for us than... We had like a... We had a card that I wasn't too fond of, right? It was like a... Hanged Man or something like that. I wasn't using it. I was just holding onto it for posterity's sake, I guess. Key Beggar. I'm just going to explode him for Magic Mushroom. Man, if that worked out, that would have been hilarious. Um, yeah, I mean, we're getting all the all the golden chest items, which you would expect to get because we have Guppy's tail. We're just opening a lot of golden chests, but that's uh, that's actually kind of nice. I'll take whatever damage I can get on this run, honestly. Like, oh, I really thought that you were already dead. That's speed plus damage, but our rate of fire still sucks. And the Krampus tax can't go around without paying the Krampus tax, man. Lump of coal, Krampus is head. There's a chance that this is better than Tammy's head for us, but I'm just going to roll with what we got. Uh, yeah, let's head down to the next floor. I'm missing out on like a spirit heart or two. Not going to sweat that too much. Let's do this. Next floor. Arcade, secret rooms, but on the way to our boss room, it doesn't seem like there's that much of value. So we're just going to, we're still going to go that way. It just seems like there's not a whole lot going on over here, which maybe is a good thing for me. You know, you never know. You know you never know. I can fly. Why am I worried about creep? Lover's card. Not good unless we get dark bum, which seems uh, extremely unlikely. Don't give me HP. All that I ask is that you don't give me HP. The other card was the chariot, which we could have used on dark bum. To be honest with you, that only gives you like four plays against Dark Bum, or on Dark Bum. I really would not have expected that to pay out. Uh, there's a chance that it could have, but I don't think it would have. Lemon Party, on the other hand, we can be pretty uh, confident that that is actually going to work out for us in the way that we intend for it, you know? If we use that on the first phase of Isaac, it's very, very unlikely that uh, he doesn't lose like a third of his health to that, which is pretty valuable. Infamy saved us from a little damage there, but not that time. That one was my bad. I thought for sure we were safe. Head up to the next floor. We lost another two spirit hearts on that floor. I'm not concerned about it yet. We have nine lives, so we have a lot of uh, kind of fail saves here. Of course, you know, the less HP we lose, the better it would be for me. Let's get Bob's brain to do some of the work in here. I'd like to keep my flies alive, but... Bob's brain apparently decided that it would rather miss. It's not like I have complete control over its aiming or anything like that. Could do one extra room, but I'm just going to bomb our way uh, around it because I figure if we do one less room, that's the, uh, uh, you know, that's one less chance to take damage. In my world, at least. I'm talking about my world, my world. I was in a band called The Temptations, but we weren't actually, uh, like a cover band or a tribute band to the uh, original Temptations. Instead, we were hired by Whiskus for their social media campaign. Because they have a they have a brand of cat treats called uh, Temptations. I forgot, if you're not a cat owner, you probably wouldn't know that. The joke kind of falls apart then. Saying a lot of cat-related uh, Temptations remakes. I guess we were a tribute band in a way. Meow girl, meow girl, meow girl. Talking about meow girl, meow girl. Temptations on sale this week at Save on Foods. I'm telling you, man. This whole YouTube thing falls apart. I got a nice career in advertising where I'll be treating the consumer with a lot of respect. And also getting rich as fuck off of those Iggy Azalea jams. I'm so thirsty. You already know. 64 ounces daily of life-giving H2O. 
Yeah, I write the songs, they sing them. Songwriter doesn't get enough credit these days, man, especially in the jingle world. It's a personality-driven industry right now. It'll work, though. Don't tell- I had people tweeting me, they're like, that shit has been stuck in my head for, like, four or five days. I was like, I feel bad for you, but at the same time, that's my fucking CV. Hey, we're looking for people to write a jingle for the new, um, you know, FDA, uh, food guide. And I just come in and drop that- I don't even give them, like, a resume, I just sing that to them. And they go, oh, this is amazing. Ludovico Technique might solve all my problems here. Everything else can fuck off forever. Uh, Epic Feet has been showing up like crazy lately. Which I'm not really a big fan of, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a great item. You could make a case for it, and I do mean this sincerely. You could make a case for it maybe being one of the best items in the game. Maybe the best item in the game, in fact. Uh, which is why I don't like it, because it's one of the best items in the game, but it's also boring. It's so boring. Um, I hate that the mine doesn't get to work on this floor here. I also hate that our rate of fire is just god-awful. However, in spite of all this, uh, the Ludovico technique pickup is enormous. Because it allows us to reliably hit enemies at the maximum rate of fire that we can, which will generate a lot more flies than uh, if we had been forced to actually rely on shooting them ourselves. Chocolate milk Tammy's head is, like, incredible if it actually works with Ludovico technique, which it does not. In fact, Chocolate Milk Tammy's head is terrible. Because every shot, I guess, is firing at the like slowest possible, or the lowest possible uh, interval of tears. That's really unfortunate, and all of a sudden, Ludovico technique, which was originally awesome, feels real bad. What a strange turn of events we've discovered late in this run. I feel like we're generating more flies now. That might be mistaken, though. Or I might be mistaken in that, I should say. Uh, still alive here, and to be honest with you, not very afraid of things, because I do think that even if we die before we fight Blue Baby, which is, you know, probably like a 30% possibility, depending on the rooms we come across, um, even if we die, we should have a very, very, very good chance of being able to beat Blue Baby on 1 HP. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to have a lot of opportunities to do so, so I think, you know, law of large numbers will work out in our favor there. That was not a very smart play on my part. We did get a friendly spider, though. I ain't afraid no ghost. Alright, get away from this. Yeah, smart idea. Who had, uh, you know, money on that happening? Everybody raises their hand. I thought you guys believed in me. Like, the blue baby fight is actually going to be a lot easier than, I would say, even this room, to be honest with you. Because blueberry, blueberry, blue baby is going to be stationary. Which is going to make my life an awful lot easier when it comes to aiming Ludovico technique, because uh, our Ludovico technique uh, steering is not very fast right now. Could change. There's our boss fight. I think we got this. I don't think it's as easy as it could have been. Like, Chocolate Milk Tammy's head is so good if I hadn't fucked it up. I don't know if Scapular does anything for us here. Hopefully, I, I don't have to find out, you know? One thing I'm going to try for is uh, landing Bob's brain whenever it comes back. That's a very nice damage bonus that I would love to have. Right now, though, Ludovico Technique plus the flies definitely holding it down. This is, like, it's pretty much over already. I don't even need to use Bob's brain on that last one. Yeah, that was... I'm surprised. I, that required a little bit of skill, but I probably put myself in a position where I needed a little bit of skill by playing terribly. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.